Welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know, this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. And today we are talking about dealing with a tough coach, specifically a coach who might be trying to change the way you do things. Let's do it. First thing that needs to be talked about when talking about dealing with coaching is coaches are there for a reason and they deserve your respect. All of them deserve your respect in certain ways. That doesn't mean that you have to be blindly allegiant to everything they're saying or listen to everything they're saying and apply everything. But they're there, they're the coach of the team, they're the head of the organization in a lot of senses. They deserve your respect. The second thing that needs to be said is Dealing with tough coaching is not necessarily a bad thing. Coaches can be tough on their players because they expect a lot out of their players. If a coach is not tough on you and doesn't expect a lot out of you, is it even worth having that kind of coach? Is it even worth having a coach at all? A coach is supposed to be able to teach you new things and see you improve and help you along your way in life, in athletics, in social issues, in whatever it is. Whatever the coach is there to do, he's supposed to help you, he or she is supposed to help you improve on what they're coaching you on. A lot of ways to do that is to put you in situations where you might fail and to give you feedback on, hey, you did well, hey, you didn't do well, hey, you need to change this, this is not a productive way to go. And that can come off to a lot of kids as tough coaching, a coach being tough on you. Now, there's a difference between that, expecting a lot out of your players and holding them to a very high standard and yelling at your players, demeaning your players, trying to change the way your players do everything, their skill set on the field, stuff like that. There are coaches for that. You go to a pitching coach, he's supposed to help you with pitching. You go to a hitting coach, he's supposed to help you with hitting. The coach of your high school team or the coach of your travel ball team may not be the best guy to learn hitting skills from or pitching skills from but they are the guy that's running that organization and you need to fall in line on certain things that they're asking of you. So those are the disclaimers that I wanted to get out of the way first and we're gonna talk about them a little bit more as we get into this. The first thing, and jumping back to the respect, the first thing as a player that you need to do to deal with a tough coach who might be trying to change what you do is you need to be well educated. You need to understand that yes, you have to respect him, but you demand respect in return as a person. All right? And if you are well-educated and you have ideas and you have research behind them and you have reasons and you've thought through it and you've put in the work and you go to your coach and you say, this is why I want to do what I'm doing, can I get some feedback on it? Why do you not want me to do this? You present a well-educated case. If he can't come back to you and give you well-educated and informed answers, that's a warning sign. That's potentially the first sign that well, the first sign would be if he just doesn't give you any answers at all and won't even have the meeting with you and won't talk about it and says, I'm the coach, you do what I say, big warning sign. That's the first one. He's probably not the right guy to be managing your career as far as your skill set and your improvement. If he does have a meeting and he doesn't seem to have good answers, that's another warning sign. It doesn't mean that he does, he's not the right guy for it. It just means that he might have to go do some research himself. He might have to educate. Maybe you brought up a subject that, you know, he wasn't aware of, that he hadn't done the research on yet, but he's gonna go do it, he's gonna go learn, form his opinion through his lens and how he's seen the team and all the different players he's coached and his experience and come back to you and say, hey, thought about what you said, I know these are your reasons, here's some counterpoints, this is what I think, this is what I've seen with different players that I've coached, blah, 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 now you can have a discussion. That's respectful. If he shuts you down, doesn't have good answers, and doesn't go do the research, that's a warning sign that this guy might not be the one that's best suited to help you improve in your career. It doesn't mean that he's not. He very well could be. Maybe he is correct, but he might not be. It's gonna take a little bit more of an investigation on your part. Really what it comes down to is the work that you're willing to put into your own career, investing in yourself, learning, studying, having this information, being well-educated, stuff like that. So let's say, you have a meeting with a coach and he accepts the meeting. He's trying to change something. You present a case to him and he either has good reasons 
for why you shouldn't do it that way, in which case you, maybe you learn something and you realize you're going down the wrong path. Or he doesn't have good reasons and he goes and he does the research and he comes back to you. That's productive. Now you're in a position, or even if he shuts you down and just won't have that conversation, you're still in the same position. The next step is to ask questions. All right. But these can't just be questions for questions sake. I can't tell you how many times I've had kids ask me questions and they just, they're trying to think of a question and they spit out the first thing that comes, what's your favorite color? You know, what kind of hair do you like? What's your hair like? Do you like these shoes? Like, are these relevant questions to what we're trying to discuss here? I might be giving a presentation on pitching and at the end, I open it up for questions and, and I get, you know, what's your favorite ice cream or, or just questions for questions sake. That's not what I'm talking about. Asking questions for questions sake is your fault. If you're doing it, that's your fault. You need to become well-educated. You need to have pointed questions, directed questions, questions that are based in research and understanding and, and knowledge of what you do and looking at the whole, the whole pie, experience and science and, and all the different things, all right? So ask your coach plenty of pointed questions. A good coach is never going to look at a good question and shut it down. He's gonna say, wow, this player, this kid, they asked me a good question, that deserves a response. My job as a coach is to educate my people and I need to have that conversation. So as long as you're asking good questions and they're rooted in an answer you're trying to get to, like I wanna understand more about this specific thing and I don't understand this specific thing, let me ask that. Always have to have an end goal, what you're trying to learn, what you're trying to get out of it, what you're trying to get to. As long as you're asking pointed questions, that's the next step, all right? If they don't give you good answers and they don't go do the research and they're not willing to answer your questions when you ask them, it's probably pretty clear at this point that this person is not the best person to be coaching you on this specific skill set that you're investigating, all right? I've had this experience a lot. I didn't handle it the best when I was in high school. I admit that. I could have done things a lot better had I known this process. My dad taught it to me. He has emphasized it my entire life. I wasn't good at implementing it yet when I was 15, 16, trying to pass this information along to you guys. But in high school, I had a coach who was not willing to have a discussion with me about pitching mechanics or about warm-up routine or about throwing or about any of it. It was, I'm the coach, you do as I say, period. I have many letters that he wrote threatening to kick me off the team because I didn't want to do the mechanics that he wanted me to or because I got uh, thrown out of a game. I got thrown out of a high school game for, in the summer. I didn't even say a word. The umpire threw me out. So there was no questioning there. There was no mutual respect. He didn't come to me and find out my side of the story and give me an educational opportunity. This, this is how it could have gone. Trevor, I need to have a meeting with you. Great, we're having a meeting. Why did you get thrown out of the game? Well, I slid into home and I was safe and I, okay, did you say something? Why did the umpire throw you out? You must have done something to have the umpire throw you out. No, sir, I didn't do anything. I don't know. I, I looked back and I, okay, here's how to handle it in the future. Did you do this? Was your body language bad? Now we can have a discussion about the different things that may have led to that moment so it doesn't happen again. Trevor, why did you draw a line in the sand when you struck out? Well, because, I mean, the, the ball was clearly off the plate. I was frustrated. Okay, you can't do that. The umpire is going to throw you out. He's in his right to throw you out. That's disrespectful. Don't do that again. Here's how you handle your frustration. That would be good coaching. What I got instead is we're going to kick you out of the program if you do it again. Does that give the player any sort of feedback and, and, and direction on, on how to change that behavior? It just says, I'm the coach. Do as I say. When I have my warm-up tool, I, I'm very, you know, I, I wear, I use the shoulder tube. I, it's my logo. I, like, it's a big part of my career. I do it to warm up and to stay healthy and to get ready to pitch. It's a tool that I use. It is now banned, or it has been in the past. I don't know if it currently is, but I know it's been banned at my high school by that same coach because he doesn't want anyone doing the Bauer stuff. Well, what if that tool helps your player become better? Wouldn't you want your player to be better and, and to use every tool that he can? to become better, that helps a team win, that's a bad coach, all right? That's not someone who you wanna trust with your skill set, with your health, with your development. Now, that being said, 
that's the coach that you, that might be the coach at your high school. You got to deal with him. You're going to be there for four years, right? That might be your college coach. You've chosen to go to school here and this is how he handles things. You have to treat him with respect. You have to find ways to work with him. You have to operate within a certain set of rules. They're the leader of the organization. They set the rules. Rules like hustle, meeting times, practice times, like when to report, when to be on the bus, like dress code, what you wear on trips. Like these are all things that you need to conform to. This is how the coach wants to run his organization. You're in his organization. Tough luck. If you don't like it, that's his organization. Go find a different organization to be in or quit or conform. But when it comes to the play on the field and the skill set, how you actually pitch, how you're hitting, like your mental game, stuff like that, those are things that you're still trying to improve. You're always trying to gain new skill sets. You might want to find someone else, someone in the private sector, someone that's actually willing to have a discussion with you, someone that can communicate in a way that you receive well. There's a lot of different things that go into it, but the team culture, team rules, dress codes, hustle, practice times, meetings, uh, bus times, all that different stuff, you got to listen to the coach on that. So my biggest advice would be, number one, mutual respect. It's the very first thing that there has to be. You need to respect the coach, but the coach also needs to respect you. You need to conduct yourself in a way that demands that respect back. Don't be blindly allegiant to what the coach is saying. If he tells you something and you disagree with it, go research it. Go look into it. Try to find out why he might be telling you this. Try to poke as many holes in your theory as possible because you'll learn something. That's the way you learn. And if you can't poke any holes in it and you've tried repeatedly, now you have a pretty good idea that the information you're getting is not the right information. Don't worry about tough coaching. There's certain ways that tough coaching is good for you and you're going to grow. It might be uncomfortable at the time, but things like giving feedback on your performance that day, your effort that day, your hustle, your, your mindset, stuff like that, expecting a lot out of you, that's important. You want that out of a coach. You want to be in that environment, but you need someone who can communicate that to you in the same, in the same way with the same amount of respect. So for all of those coaches out there that are looking to be better at coaching their players, for all those players out there who may be dealing with a coach that doesn't like them or, you know, is tough on them or like anything like that, hopefully something in this video helped you out. This is a big problem across all levels of baseball, even at the professional level. <laughs> you would expect it wouldn't be in the big leagues. You have professional coaches and professional players, but this is still a very big problem at every level of baseball. So hopefully something I said helped. Share this video with anyone who might be going through coaching troubles or any coaches that you know that might be able to get some benefit out of it. I have a goal of getting to 100,000 subs by the end of 2020. So if you hit, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, leave me a comment letting, letting me know what you thought about this video, any future topics you'd like me to cover, that would be great. And that's all. Have a good day.